Patrick Bet David thinks he's slick. He's not nearly as slick as he thinks. Uh, last week, late last week, he tried to drag Sage Steele into his feud or dispute with me. I've seen the technique uh, that Patrick Bet David is using. I've seen it before. I've seen it from other people that I consider plants that are installed to be influencers in the podcast and in the internet influencer space. Uh, but I want to play you this clip of him trying to drag Sage Steele into something that Sage Steele has nothing to do with. Play the clip. Thoughts on uh, 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 working with Jason Whitlock? Because I know there was a feud between Jason and, and Stephen A, and you've worked with both of them. Uh, uh, I didn't get to work real hands on with with Jason. I think he oh, was you in and out. Oh, okay. He was never on Sports Center, etc. I worked with Stephen uh, A a hundred times, especially during the NBA Finals on the road. Yes, I always loved it because you could throw anything at him. He was certainly entertaining and and challenging too. Yeah, yeah. But we had a good relationship because um, you know I was I wasn't afraid to go back at him. You know, like just because as a basketball fan to have those conversations. And I and by the way, I love Jason Whitlock. I respect the hell out of him because he says and does things that nobody else will, especially in the black community and he's hated for it but to me like you you gotta at least listen even if you disagree uh, that was just a taste of like a 20 minute conversation of him trying to bait Sage Steele into taking shots at me Patrick Bet David exhibiting the exact same behavior as Stephen A. Smith I'll explain today Welcome. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I'm Jason Whitlock, your host. Happy Monday. Thank you for joining me. Awesome show planned for you today. It's just going to be me and you. I'm going to break down uh, Patrick Bet David, who I'm now calling Patrick Plant David. I'm going to break that down for you on today's show. Uh, before I do any of that, there's some things I need you guys to do for me. Uh, check out exclusive, extra fearless content on Blaze TV. Go to blazetv.com slash fearless. Use the promo code fearless and you can save $20 on your yearly subscription. We have extra Blaze content behind the paywall. You're still going to get this great marvelous show, but we're also providing you additional content to our Blaze TV subscribers. I think today Shamika and I will be talking about uh, this MIT diversity, equity, and inclusion vice president or whatever that had some incident on a plane that he said was racist. Shamika and I will break all that down uh, for you today. So please uh, get your Blaze TV subscription uh, so that you can see this extra content we're providing for you. Uh, today's episode, though, is brought to you by our good friends at Good Ranchers. Good Ranchers is locking in your price until 2026 when you subscribe to any of their boxes of 100% American meat and seafood. Use my promo code FEARLESS at GoodRanchers.com and save 10%. Thank Good Ranchers for being so good to us and being good to you by supporting this type of amazing content uh, that we'll have for you today. Uh, if you're listening over Apple, uh, give us that five-star rating. If you're uh, watching on YouTube, start hitting the likes and the subscriptions and notifications and telling your friends to come join us each uh, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Central Time, uh, for content like uh, we're about to get into today. So <clears throat> before I get into showing you some additional things of Patrick Bet David and, and what he did on his show, I, I want to walk you through a little bit of history in a recent history that will explain to you why I think Patrick Bet David's a plant, why I think he's very similar uh, to Stephen A. Smith, why I think he's caping up for, for Stephen A. Smith. And so I, I want to walk you through this tiny bit of history. If you remember when Stephen A. Smith and I first started going back and forth, if you remember, and most people don't, everyone thinks, oh, Whitlock just came out and critiqued Stephen A's book. It's not what happened. What happened was 
Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp went on a little tour where they were trying to trash uh, people that I know and executives that I know and people that I have respect for. And they were going to go on this tour of slamming everybody and painting everybody as this or that. And I said, hey, man, be careful. I know a lot about all of you guys. Be very careful. You're going to go on this tour. You're going to spark me into going on a tour. That's all I said. That was the warning that I gave. So a month or two later, three months later, Stephen A. Smith went on the Joe Budden podcast. And he annihilated Max Kellerman. He went after Max Kellerman and started talking about why no one respected Max and why no one wanted to, Max didn't have any value on first take and why he got rid of Max. And I said nothing, really, at that time. Marcellus Wiley, who was good friends with Max, went after Stephen A. Smith. These are facts. Go punch it into your YouTube search engine, you can go see it. Marcellus stepped up for his guy, Max Kellerman, and went after Stephen A. Smith. Go punch it into YouTube search history. People started attacking Stephen A. Smith and saying that Marcellus had basically ethered him and that Stephen A. Smith didn't want smoke with Marcellus Wiley because Marcellus Wiley destroyed Stephen A. Smith. And so Stephen A. Smith, in the middle of catching all this backlash for his clash with Marcellus Wiley, Stephen A. Smith goes on his own podcast and out of nowhere, when he's allegedly addressing Marcellus Wiley, he pivoted and attacked me. Out of nowhere. I had nothing to do with this. And then, but he starts calling me fat bastard. And remember, th these, these are facts. I'm minding my own business. He started calling me fat bastard. And I came on this show and explained to you all, he's doing that to distract from the fact that he's under attack for attacking Max Kellerman and he doesn't want to battle with Marcellus Wiley. And so he said... There go the real bad guy. Let me point a finger at Jason Whitlock. Y'all get up off of me. Jason Whitlock is the real bad guy. Go attack him. He's fat bastard. We came back on this show and said, oh, <laughs> I'm fat bastard? Okay. We can have this conversation. Stephen A., I read your book. You're a fraud. That's how things played out. Stephen A. Smith was in hot water, tried to use me as a distraction, and I opened up a can on him. That's what happened. Those are facts. Now, let's fast forward to Patrick Plant David. Many of you all know the history with me and Patrick uh, Bet David. He invited me to appear on his show sent me emails in writing, asking me to be on his show. I took a day, 36 hours basically out of my schedule to fly down to Florida to appear on his show. When I got there, I'm staying at a hotel literally within walking distance, two minutes from his studio. His driver that they sent took me on a 20, 25 minute ride to the studio, got on the highway, did all kinds of things, just wasting time. I, I get to the studio and I'm like, well, this seems a, a tiny bit odd, but I get to the studio. They usher me into a room. Patrick Bet David comes in and says, hey, what do you think about uh, Roland Martin? I was like, he's a clown. Oh, well, what would you think about uh, debating him on my show today? I was like, well, why would I do that? He's a clown. He's not interested in sincere engagement. Though that's not the pretense you got me to take time out of my own schedule, be away from my show and away from Nashville 
to to wrestle with Roland Martin. I was like, man, I had Roland Martin. You can go look on the internet and it's all there. Roland Martin, five years ago, I had him to my home in Los Angeles, did a two hour sit down interview with him on his show where he clearly, you can go watch it, not interested in sincere engagement. Talked all over top of me, just wasn't interested. He's not an honest broker. He's a controlled plant for the Democrat party. I don't think he's honest. I don't think there's any substance there. I think he's a buffoon, but I had him in my home for two hours, gave him that time. It was a pointless conversation. I explained all this to Patrick Bet David. I would have never flown down here to wrestle with a clown like Roland Martin, and that's not the pretense you brought me down here for. And I got up and walked out and left. Patrick Bet David followed me out, tried to convince me to come back, told me that, no, you don't have to do the interview with Roland Martin. And, but I was like, nah, man, you're not honest. You got me down here on a bogus pretense. I'm out. I- I'm good. I- I'm frustrated. Y- 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 you should have just dealt with me honestly. And we wouldn't have these problems. But now I'm going back to Nashville. I'm good. Same driver comes, picks me up. Uh takes me to my hotel, and that's when I discovered, like, hold on, my hotel is literally 90 seconds away? And the driver explains to me that, yeah, they had me drive you around because they didn't want you to see that Roland Martin was at the studio, and they were bringing Roland in through one door, and it was an all-orchestrated scheme. I called Patrick Bet David out on it. I just explained. He has been very defensive and tried to pretend like, oh, no, we were on the air. It's just a miscommunication. Oh, we did tell him this. We did. It's a lie. And he, he still harbors resentment. And he's still upset about it. So he gets Sage Steele and tries to bait her into taking shots at me. But why did he do it now? The thing with me and Patrick Bay David happened a year ago. Yeah, approximately a year ago. Why now? Well, let's go look at what Patrick Bet David is in trouble or was getting attention for. Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro have been in a public squabble. She's left the Daily Wire. They let her go. There was talk about them having a debate. And Patrick Bet David puts out a tweet offering up $250,000 to Lakin Riley's family if Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens will have a debate on his platform. Lakin Riley is the Georgia college student who was murdered by an illegal immigrant. Patrick Bet David trying to capitalize off of that tragedy says, yeah, contingent on Ben and Candace coming to dance on my platform, I'll give money to Lake and Riley's family or to some charity or whatever. He's been getting annihilated for that. And that's all happened in the past two weeks. You guys have been following the news cycle. That's all happened in the past two weeks. And people have been calling Patrick Bet David out for that. Because again, What it looks like is like, well, man, this guy's a used car salesman. He's a multi-level marketer. He's been running perhaps a scam. That's how he's made all of his money. That's the kind of, this ain't me talking. This is what's been all over the internet and all over Twitter ever since he pulled this crap. People questioning Patrick Beck David's ethics. And is he just a scam artist? Is he just an opportunist? Is he actually legitimate or is everything about him about money? This ain't me. Go check my Twitter feed. I'm pretty sure, and I'm going off memory, sometimes I tweet a lot. I don't think I've tweeted one word about the scam he tried to pull off with Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens. Fact check me if I'm wrong. Again, I'm 98% sure 
I haven't tweeted a word, hadn't said a word about it. Because I already know the deal on Patrick Beck David. I've already experienced it firsthand. And so I was letting other people find out what I already knew. I didn't have to jump into that. So again, I'm over here minding my own business. Patrick Beck David needs a distraction from the hot water that he's in. There go the bad guy, Jason Whitlock. Look at him. He's terrible. Even Stephen A. Smith hates him. There go the bad guy. He's not, he's not relevant. If I'm not relevant, why are you asking questions about me? Why are you using me in a pumped up feud between me and you to distract from the fact that people didn't like the way you tried to capitalize off the tragedy related to Lake and Riley? This is how plants work. This is how the installed work. They have a playbook. Oh, Marcellus is killing Stephen A. Smith. Well, there go the real bad guys, Jason Whitlock. No one likes him. Patrick Bet David is getting killed over Lake and Riley and Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens. Oh, there go the bad guys, Jason Whitlock. No one likes him. I'm over here minding my business. So now I'm in your business since you invited it. So I'm going to spend some time today walking you through what he said about me and how this played out on his show and what it says about Patrick Bat David, the multi-level marketer who's, who's made a lot of money. Hats off to you, Pat. Hats off. <laughs> Again, I, I've explained on this show and I've explained for years, the man with the most money oftentimes oftentimes is the man willing to cut the most corners. You have to abandon ethics to make the kind of money Patrick Bet David has made in such a short time in, in such a multi-level Ponzi scheme way. But g give me a, a second. I'm going to start playing these clips, but I want to tell you guys about another one of our uh, great sponsors, Ramp Financial. Want a better way to simplify your business finances across expenses, vendor payments, and accounting? If so, Ramp could be a complete game changer. Ramp is the corporate card and spend, and spend management software designed to help you save time and put money back in your pocket. Ramp's accounting software automatically collects receipts and categorizes your expenses in real time so you don't have to. You'll never have to chase down a receipt again, and your employees will no longer spend hours submitting expense reports. The time you'll save each month on employee expenses will allow you to close your books eight times faster. Ramp saves you money. Businesses that use Ramp save an average of 5% the first year and now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash fearless. That's ramp.com slash fearless. Ramp, R-A-M-P dot com slash fearless. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank Members FDIC, terms and conditions apply. I want to circle back to our guy, uh, Pat Plant David. <clears throat> Let's play uh, SOT number two. I think this is uh, a, a this, this is someone after Sage Steele, I played you guys at the top, Sage Steele uh, defending me or answering Pat David's uh, question. And then one of Patrick's sidekicks actually tries to bail him out, tries to move the conversation to more fertile territory. Patrick Brad David will have none of that. He, he wants to spend time on me. Let's play stop number two. How much have you realized since leaving the sports world that there's just more important things for you to focus on finances, politics, family, culture issues? Like how much sports do you even Your watch? Your question has to do with Stephen. Yeah, like he's not? he's fo he's focusing on other things other than just sports. This clearly is personal to me, but from a macro. I want to stay on this. We'll go okay. to that. That's not yeah. about this question. I do love yeah. I do love that question. Yeah, oh, yeah. we'll come back yeah. to that. But let me let me stay on this question here. So with Stephen and and, uh, and uh, Whitlock. So uh, with with Stephen A, 
I don't, I don't see a lot of other sports guys that dislike him <clears throat> in the space. Now, you know, when he tells a story, I like how he says, I call my pastor, I call this, I call my sisters, I even call Bob to say, hey, I'm not going to, you know, it's going to be a little bit bad. And he at least took the steps to go through that for him to make the comments he made about uh, 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 Jason. Now, but it's not on an ESPN platform, so it it's doesn't matter. His, but still, he, he knows he's representing the brand he knows to he give is, the respect. But, right. but there's definitely a separation. Right. And he knows he can say whatever he wants. You're not using that language on an ESPN platform. You know what mm, I mean? So right. I think he, and he's, that's in his contract. So that's Patrick Ray David giving Stephen A credit. And he's talking about Stephen A's profanity lace tirade directed towards me. One of the most unprofessional things in the history of corporate media. Stephen A offered nothing of substance in return. I questioned the validity of many of the stories in his book, not just related to his phony basketball career, but virtually everything in Stephen A's book can be called into question as fabricated and or exaggerated. I questioned all of that. I didn't call Stephen A a bunch of names. I questioned his book. Stephen A, instead of answering any of the allegations, like, hey man, who's this Gary Stevens midget that you're running around with claiming he's your Winston-Salem State teammate? You guys are traveling the country. This guy's speaking to Winston-Salem State Basketball players, there's no evidence of Gary Stevens ever playing basketball at Winston-Salem State. And there's actually a story in the, in the old Winston-Salem State Journal about a six foot three guard, Gary Stevens. Gary Stevens is the guy to the left of Stephen A. S uh, Smith, to the right of us on screen. Stephen A is six foot one. Gary Stevens looks to be five nine. There is someone listed as a recruit in the mid 80s as a six foot three guard, Gary Stevens. That Gary Stevens, the six foot three one or this midget, never played a single time at Winston Salem State when we called the registrar. When we called the registrar, there was never a Gary Stevens registered at Winston Salem State. Stephen A and this guy can be seen in multiple pictures claiming to be Winston Salem State team. That's them getting honored at Winston Salem State or Stephen A getting honored at Winston Salem State. I've been asking the, who is that guy? Because we found that guy having played at some tiny small college uh, in New York. That's where he met his wife. We found this information. But that guy shows up nowhere at Winston-Salem State. Nowhere. Played at some tiny school up in New York, according to our... Re hey, bring Gary Stevens on. To now, Jason, you're just dead wrong here, and I can prove it. Here's this midget on the Winston-Salem State teammate. Yes, he was in a terrible skateboarding accident and lost five inches of height. But yes, this is the six-foot-three uh, Gary Stevens that, uh, you know, allegedly was recruited in Winston-Salem State one offseason. Hasn't done that. And so what, what Stephen A. Smith did was tape a 45-minute cursing tirade. Why is Patrick Bet David defending this? Why is he giving him credit for contacting his minister? Hey, I called my minister and told him, I'm about to do a bunch of sinful behavior. And that's something to be credited with? That's something to be celebrated and praised for? Oh, yeah, I called my fitness trainer and told them I'm about to spend the afternoon at McDonald's. Who does that? No one, but, but Patrick McDavid somehow is defending this. Why? Well, again, he needs a distraction. He wants beef with me. He says during this interview with Sage that, yeah, Whitlock's going to respond. He, he, he wants a distraction. Well, I hope this is the distraction he was hoping to get because I'm going to walk people through. And I, I want to skip to, I want to lay a foundation before we get to these other clips because, you know, P Patrick Bet David seems oblivious to, to what it is I'm doing here. 
And so I want to skip to sock number seven. And I, I want to play you all Patrick Bet David talking about his Christian faith. This is in an interview he did with Steven Crowder four or five months ago. And so, he, and there's plenty of other uh, interviews and stories about uh, Patrick Bet David, who's Iranian, and his Christian faith walk. But this one I found the most interesting, just kind of to summarize that this man claims a religious faith, but he's so baffled by what it is that I'm doing. This seems contradictory to me, but let's play Sot 7. We're in the car, we're having a big fight. I don't have any money. I feel like shit. I'm like, dude, I can't have $49,000 in it. I can't even afford to pay nine bucks for movies for this girl. I felt like I was just, I was not a man at that. My dad would always say, when men don't have money, they're not good for society. So you have to be able to contribute to have your manliness. We're in the car, we get into a big fight, and then we break it off. And she leaves. I'm in the car, expedition. This is 1.30 in the morning at this point. We finished the movie. And I say, God, I haven't spoken to my mom for five years. But if you exist, I would love to talk to my mom. 30 seconds later, my next tell, I get a call from a block number. Brother, this is like a, I've told the story. It's a very weird moment in my, scariest moment for me. I don't want to answer the phone. And it's one of those next tells, well, you know, the, the flip phones. Yeah. And I flip it, and it's my mom crying. So why are you crying? She says, I got the feeling you were in pain. How'd you get this number? She says, you know, I just got it six months ago. I said, but do you know what I'm going through right now? What are you going? I said, no, nothing. But I don't know how to talk to her. I hang up the phone. I sat in that car that night, top of the hills, chills all over my body. I'm like, oh my God, either this is ironic or this is real, but the level of coincidence is a little too real. I could have chosen to say it's ironic. I chose to believe it was God and he has my back and he's had my back from day one. That level of confidence I got from that moment that somebody was watching me and had my back is the reason why I am where I'm at today. I make my decisions purely knowing he has my back. And if you ask me what's one of my biggest fears, one of my biggest fears in my life is losing his favor. I can't tell you how much that scares the hell out of me. So, and there's plenty of other clips, but, but I just wanted to play that one because I found that one to be the most profound. He's really afraid of losing God's favor. And I, I don't think he's going to lose God's favor because of his engagement with me, whether we like each other or not, whether he continues to beef with me or not. That's not going to get him crossways with God. His lack of understanding, in my view, is what will get him crossways with God and, and likely has got him crossways with God because he has no understanding of his Christian walk. And, I, and let me unpack that a little further by, by just showing you additional clips and then just asking you some fundamental questions. Let's play uh, SOT number three. This is where Patrick Bet David says that I'm a troll. Let's play the clip. Now, in regards to black men and all that stuff, I, I'm not when they when they go that route. I'm not I'm not a, a, a fan of that. But uh, I, I also can see how Jason probably plays the game of trying to be a troll and trying to get under his skin. And in this situation, to be honest with you, Jason won. In yeah. what way? Because J nobody follows Jason anymore. Jason's no longer at the level that he used to be, where he was getting the eyeballs before. And but the, he's the number one guy, Stephen A. So Stephen A. actually brought eyeballs to him, then the other way around. So this is when a guy attacks up, and you get the up to attack you down. The guy at the bottom attacking up actually wins. Good point. Because you just brought made him relevant that other people are reacting to. So this is a this is a W for Jason in the context of. Uh, 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 Choosing your enemies wisely. Yeah, you know how Jake Paul gets the guys yeah. above him to get irritated or Connor or some of this stuff? Yeah. In this context, he wins, but when it comes on to finances, winning, financially free, the face, history, legacy, all this stuff, Stephen A. dominated, Jason. So when it comes down to finances, legacy, I, I can't remember all the things, the other things he, he referenced. And again, this is where I just, 
What type of Christian interprets the world that way? It, it, and then what type of Christian? And, and at one point, Petra B. David talked about it. he's been following me and my career for years. And he's pretending to have some sort of insight into what I do now. That would probably explain why a year ago they offered to bring me down to Florida to appear on his show. So he's not unfamiliar with me. And so <clears throat> what understanding of Christianity and Christian faith does he have that he would be judging me on the standards of I'm sitting around counting Stephen A. Smith's pocket and counting my pocket and going, oh, my God, I wish I was making 12 million a year. And who, who does that? What, what Christian has that outlook on the world? Oh, Stephen A. is dominating. Jason. And again, I, I don't want anyone to sound like I'm defensive about that, because in terms of finances, he is dominating. But that's not my mission. And I've made that perfectly clear, not just in words, but in deed. He, he's, he's acting like I don't know exactly what it is that I'm doing. That Because at some point, and we don't, we don't play the clip, but he and Sage Steele both talk about how smart that I am. He acknowledges it. She says it. He acknowledges it. Do you think I don't know what I'm doing? Do, do you think... When I left Fox Sports and left all that money on the table, you think I didn't know what I was doing? You think that wasn't a choice? Has anyone listened to this show and I'm trying to convey to people money is not the key to happiness and that it certainly isn't the key to salvation? And so I've swung into a completely different lane intentionally. And, and, and I know that I'm leading with a message about Jesus Christ, and I know what the consequences of that are. They killed Jesus Christ. They killed his disciples. Jesus was not popular in life. His disciples weren't popular in life. I know exactly what I'm doing. And I'm not calling myself a disciple. I'm certainly not uh, uh, comparing myself uh, to Jesus Christ. But I know the consequences of standing on this Bible and, and arguing the things that I'm arguing. Because I've had all that popularity success. I, I sat in Kansas City, Missouri, flyover country, and wrote a column that was more popular than any other column in the country, with the exception of probably Bill Simmons, who had ESPN backing him. But if Bill Simmons had sat in any one little city not attached to ESPN, would not compete with what I was doing in Kansas City, dwarfing the following traction relevancy of any of these people in major cities and virtually anybody anywhere. And, and I know how exactly how I did it. I know what sellout moves I did to be that popular. I know what I promoted. Again, I was arguing the truth, but I laced it with just enough debauchery, just enough wickedness to make it palatable to the masses. Everybody knew Jason Whitlock loved chasing tail, loved drinking, loved gambling, loved going out to Vegas. <laughs> Everybody knew that, that that was part. I wrote columns when I was in Kansas City and working for Fox Sports at the same time where I actually promoted, promote, wrote a column. I can't remember the title of the column, but I wrote that like if a man made X amount of dollars, he was entitled to cheat on his wife. And his wife just had to accept that. Now, again, I would mix a lot of truth 
around that and write columns that had nothing to do with that. But I let everybody know I was as wicked and as evil as anybody. And people loved me for it. So I know how to get popular. I know what you have to do to be popular. And, and the moment I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm not going to do that anymore. That's when like, I'm choosing the narrow path. I know what I'm sacrificing. I know that if I, man, if you would just do what you used to do, write those pussy galore columns again, Jason. Mix a little of that in with your biblical teachings. But, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to participate. I see where that wickedness has led us, and I'm just not going to do it. So I, I just don't understand how someone of faith and of age, again, Patrick Bay Davis got to be in his mid 40s, early 50s, right? This is such an immature, childish outlook on life, but it, it's someone hyped up on ego. So someone. Uh, so fooled by his bank account that he has a very immature outlook on life, a childish-like outlook on life. There's no substance there. There's just someone chasing money. I'm not chasing money. I'm chasing after God. Do I want money? Yes. Is it my priority? No. Will I do all kinds of things that will limit me from making as much money as I have the talent to acquire? Because there's no one, and I'm sorry for saying this because it makes me sound arrogant and ego-driven, but there's no one in this business that doesn't realize, because I was told it my entire career, if you just do X, Y, and Z, Jason, oh my God, you would be at the top of this business. But I always had a line that I, I would not cross, things I would not do. I'll never forget, <laughs> they wanted me early on in their mid-early 90s, late 90s. Man, if you could just, late 90s, early 2000s, if you could just present yourself more like Stuart Scott, it's a great time to be authentically black or whatever. Nah, man, that, that, that's, you know, I like rap and all that, but that's not how I talk. It's not what I do. I'm a journalist. I, I, I'm going to circle back, but I want to take care of another one. This is a great new sponsor I'm excited about. Jace Medical, just like it was back, just like it was back during the pandemic. Today, we're facing drug and medical supply shortages in the United States. As of March, there were more than 200 drug shortages here, and it's looking like it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets any better. Healthcare experts have pointed to shortages, domestic production, and the Drug Supply Chain Security Act as trends to watch this year. You wouldn't think that things like this could happen in America, but we've been seeing it for literally years now. This is why you, you should have a, a Jace case. It provides Five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All you have to do is fill out a single, a simple form online, and you'll have it there, ready in case you need it. There are dozens of add-on options as well, like EpiPens and Ivermectin. Jace Medical is empowering people just like you to be able to take care of your family's health into your own hands. Check them out today. Go to Jace Medical, that's J-A-S-E medical.com, Enter my promo code FEARLESS at checkout for a discount on your order. That's promo code FEARLESS at J-A-S-E medical.com. Come on. Th that, that's such a no-brainer in this time we're living in, to be able to have the medical supplies you need with all this uncertainty going on in the world. Everybody needs to do this. I will be ordering mine today. I need you to join me. Back to Patrick Plant David. <clears throat> so here is Bet David circling back uh, to Sage Steele and, and trying to diminish me and trying to provoke her into hopping on board with diminishing me. 
Let's play the clip. Sot uh, four. I think that, well, and, I, and I know this, one of the reasons why you say, you know, he doesn't have the following that he did in the past. Well, well certainly, but which way does social media lean? Oh, big time left. Oh, huge. So they're going to make sure. I don't know about that. Oh, 100%. I don't, I don't know about that. I feel that strongly. And let me, let me tell you why I don't know about that. Look, I've listened to Jason for many years, and I'm talking back in the days. I think Jason is very smart, very and I think Jason says a lot of things that, you know, is very uh, uh, needed. He alienates. Needed, necessary. Mm-hmm. But I do think, Sage, like, for example, I don't know who you are, meaning from I know who you are. I've known you for years. You've only known me for a minute because we sat next to each other at uh, uh, UFC. I knew who you were before I sat next to you. I totally get it. But what <laughs> I mean by that is, like, I've known you a lot longer than you've known me. Right. So I followed your career a lot longer than you've known me. And then I sit next to you. I'm like, OK, let me see how she is. You know how much I enjoyed our conversation that night? We had such great time yeah. together. You and the guy, you know, our, our, you know, Italian mobster lawyer buddy, oh, you know, Joe. Comer- Joe's you know, amazing. He's I here. I love him. He's love the guy. He's right? like a cousin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's the guy you just want to go. He right in. I love him. Fully, I love him. He fully does, yeah. by the way. He fully does. But I'm sitting there and I walk. You know what? I walk away and I said, I, said, I like her. Oh, my God, she's so cool because sometimes you win people over more off camera and you lose people off camera more than on camera. You can act here, but then how are you off camera? I liked you off camera. Thank you. And I walked around and I say, well, remember this? I'm like, a what mi- a freaking yep. cool cat. Yep. We could talk to her for hours. She was so cool, right? Yep. To me, the only feedback I would give to uh, – uh, I've, I've, I've had a lot of guys that have worked with our company, business, insurance, different things. And I have guys that are right. Your argument is right. But there's a book written 80, 90 years ago by this guy named Dale Carnegie who says how to win friends and influence people. You can persuade more if you can be a little bit likable. Yeah. You have to be liked. You know, when it comes on to selling your ideas, you got to be likable. You got to be trusting and you got to give facts. Jason brings the facts. Sometimes, you know, maybe he needs to read how to win. And I'm, by the way, I'm sure he's going to react to this and give whatever he's going to say. Deep down inside, Jason, while you do your reaction video and you try to trash my argument and Stephen and say we're boys and all this other stuff, privately without telling anybody, go read how to win friends and influence people. But, I think it would benefit but you. Don't, but, uh, That's the disconnect between me and Patrick Bank David. He's pointing to an 80-year-old book by Dale Carnegie. I'm pointing to a much older book and a much more profound book called The Bible. And, and, and he's giving suggestions on, hey, you should uh, read Dale Carnegie and, and build your life around how to win friends and influence people. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a problem winning friends. None. And, and there are many people who find me very likable. Many. I've known them for years. We'll meet them tomorrow or the next day, or I met them yesterday. I don't have a problem being liked. Now, do journalists struggle with me, my peers? Yes. I want them to struggle. Because I didn't get involved with the media to be friends with the media. I got involved with the media and it long, and the guy says he's been following me forever. But long before Donald Trump ever said fake news, I entered the media and started writing columns calling out the media in the early, early 1990s. It's been part of my life mission, criticize the media because I think the media is dishonest and plays favorites. I've won awards for calling out the media and blowing up their narratives. It didn't make, it does not make me friends with very many people in the media, particularly untalented ones and the ones that uh, cut corners. But, but, But more than anything, Pat, If you're going to do interviews with people and point to your Christian faith and talk about this transformation you went through 20 years ago 
when you were in the military and you had to go uh, listen to some guy read the Bible. Let some of that soak in to your worldview and perspective. And so I have a reading list for you, Patrick, and it has nothing to do with Dale Carnegie. It has to do with Jesus Christ, a more profound person than Dale Carnegie. I would like for you to start with Matthew 19 and 24. I'll say it again. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Start there. And then think about yourself. And just understand this isn't hyperbole. This is fact. Now, Patrick, I'd imagine he, he owns a piece of the Yankees. Let's say he's worth three, four, five hundred million dollars. Let's just say. Is 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 he the camel that's getting through the eye of the needle? Is he the guy? Now, I've, I've never had three, four hundred million dollars in the bank. I had and have. A lot in the bank, but. Again, I give a lot of it away and I'm <laughs> I, I probably won't die with it. But I know what making millions of dollars a year is, what it does to the mind and how it makes you compromise and not serve God. You end up serving yourself. You start thinking of yourself as your own God. You lose all humility. And then you get caught up, super caught up in, oh, my God. God, Jason Whitlock flew down to Florida and, and I misled him and he walked out of here and he didn't bow to me and all of my money. He didn't recognize what all I could do for him. And he treated me like anybody else instead of Patrick Bet David and I'm worth hundreds of millions of dollars and I'm capable of doing X, Y, and Z for you, Jason, if you were more likable, if you were more deferential towards me. That's his underlying message. And my underlying message is, God is going to provide me all that I need. That's it. And so I'm not thinking, when I engage with Patrick Bet David, I'm not thinking about, oh, what can Patrick Bet David do for me if he likes me? I'm thinking about what God will do for me if I obey him. That's the difference between me and you, Patrick Brett David. You think you're going to be the camel that gets through the eye of the needle. Or maybe you just don't even care. You got so much money and you're having such a good time here on earth. You don't care about your soul. There are people like that. But I'm asking you to judge me on the standards, hold me to the standards of how I define myself. I'm a Christian. Hold me to that standard. Evaluate me through that lens. And trust me, I fail. There's plenty of things to criticize me about as a Christian. But holding me to your standards? Oh, Chase is not likable. He didn't bow to me. He didn't kiss my rear end. He, he wouldn't accept my... BS excuses for the scam we tried to run on him because we wanted to put him and Roland because I'm Patrick Bet David. I'm worth millions of dollars. I wanted these two Negroes to come wrestle in front of my audience. I set up a fight. I'm Calvin Candy. This is Django. And I've got these two great Negro fighters. Roland Martin and Jason Whitlock and, and Roland Martin is a clown. He's in on it with me because he is one. He dances when they say dance. He's in on it. Jason wouldn't take the fight and was upset with me for even scheduling the fight. And he left and treated me very disrespectfully. You have a God complex and it's driven by the amount of money in your bank account and your pursuit of money. You're not man enough. You're not man enough to say, you know what? That was wrong, man. I shouldn't have done that. That's a bad look on my part. 
I see why you're upset. Can we start over again? That's what a man would do who was serving God. Instead, look at how you're behaving. When, <clears throat> I don't even like Don Staley. Did y'all see me last week say, I'm sorry? Hey man, I may have judged this woman too harshly and I don't even really know how I feel about Don Staley. But I reached the conclusion, hey, I may have judged her too harshly. She's blocked me on Twitter you know, a year or so ago. I don't even like her, don't need her. Uh, she don't need me. But I was like, ah, I may be wrong here. I'm sorry, let me apologize. Because I'm nothing special. Pat, I got some more reading for you to do. Go, when you're done with Matthew 19 and 24, go to Timothy 13 and 12. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. I, I, I'm giving you that scripture so, again, so that potentially you could understand me. All who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. I'm not here for popularity. The persecution is what I'm looking for. Because it'll be a sign that I'm doing the right thing. Then I want you to move to, back to Matthew 5 and 11. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. I love it. So Stephen A., I call him out on the lies in his books. He persecutes me, reviles me, utters all kinds of evil against me. I'm the worst human in the planet, the worst human being on earth because I questioned his book? Because I'm a critic of Stephen A. Smith? How you know many people have walked this planet and done despicable things? I'm the worst human being Stephen A. Smith ever knew. Really? This is crazy. But it ain't about me. It's about what I'm standing on. Stephen A. Smith don't even realize that he's in total rebellion to God. All he knows is that he's in rebellion to the truth that I exposed on him. But he's really in rebellion to truth because his whole persona, his whole everything is a lie. Wrap it up, uh, Patrick, with John 15 and 18. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. Read those. Those four scriptures. Just start. You ain't got to read no whole Dale Carnegie book. Just read those four scriptures and then rethink your position on me, or just rethink your position on life. Rethink, don't even make it about me, make it about you. If everybody's out here celebrating you and you're the greatest thing in the world and you're having this amazing popularity, how are you doing it and what does it say about you as a Christian? This is a standard you said that you have. As a businessman, hats off to you. Go get that money. Have, 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 I want to be judged as a Christian. Uh, I want to <laughs> go back and play uh, one more thing about, he makes this point about uh, Sage Steele being likable, and it's a way of arguing that I'm unlikable. Uh, it's sought number five. Celebrated. We're, we're saying so. the same thing. The only difference is, Sage, you're likable. Okay. You're likable. Okay. You're likable. So, but, but to use that as an excuse, like when you're saying, you know, with, you know, uh, uh, how hard it is for the left, Candace Owens is the most viral person out there. But she's not working for like an ESPN or one of these places. No, right? but, but, but that's not the point though. The point is, it is a is lot. Candace is Candace likable? Is, is, is Candace, when we spend that night with Candace off camera, walked away loving her. Oh, she's the best. At the highest level. Yep. Both of you. But you're we are completely you're, different but, human but, beings. But, but, that, but that's the point. Though. But, the, but you know what it was? With Candace, you know what I saw? With Candace, I saw a childlike, curious, 
a, a, a person that wants to question everything. That can be like, uh, uh, I have a kid like that, right? Now, obviously, he's a kid. She's a grown woman with three kids, 35 years old, established, successful. But I, I liked the curious poking. What about this? Why this? That's not fair. How about this? What about this? Do you think about this? And then she's laughing, and then you see this personality, that, that creative side. With you, I sat there. I'm like, I'm sitting in between Sade and I'm sitting in between uh, 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 MC Light, you know, like, and I'm, you know, <laughs> wow. but, but, but I'm not, I'm talking about from the, yeah. where it's like, this one's like talking about that, and this one's like, you know, cherish the day. And at yeah. the same time, we got it the smooth operator, <laughs> but still, I want to listen to both. Yeah. You know, I want to listen to I both. So he, here's, uh, yeah, he's not a sophisticated thinker or he's not making sophisticated arguments. Candace Owens and uh, Sage Steele are women, and they're attractive women. Anybody that's lived on this planet knows how much easier it is for an attractive woman to be liked, regardless of what type of person they are. And that's not a shot at Sage Steele or Candace Owens. It's just reality. But, but more than that, as it relates, his bigger point is like, hey, look, Candace Owens, she's hardcore conservative, and look how popular she is, and Jason should be as popular as Candace. I'm making different choices than Candace Owens. And so here's what Candace Owens, here's how she built her career and built her brand. And I'm not knocking it, I'm just explaining it. And, and just like a sophisticated, nuanced way. Candace was involved in Blexit, a purely political movement. I'm not into politics. Not like that, not even close. I've never voted. You don't hear me campaigning for uh, the Republican Party or anybody that hard. Do I like Donald Trump? Yes. Is any part, go check my Twitter feed, go watch this show, because I love all the people to say, oh, we're like just a hardcore Trump. How many Trump shows do we do on this show? Not very many. I bet you can count them on two or three fingers in three years. How many Trump thumbnails and shows we've actually done? I bet you can count it on one hand. We probably did more on Caitlin Clark last week than we've done on Donald Trump in the entirety of this show. But, but there is popularity to be gained by choosing a side politically, and that's why everybody's done it. Now, do I like the left? No. But am I 10 toes down in the political world as a conservative? Absolutely not. I don't even like being called a conservative. I'm a Christian. I get that the world defines everybody that's Christian or who actually follows any Christian tenets as conservative, but, but I'm not chasing political popularity the way Candace did. I, I'm out here virtually every day trying to preach to people the wisdom of a biblical worldview and that you can fix your problems with the Bible and through a relationship with Jesus Christ, that you can fix all of your problems with that. You don't need the government. You don't need the Democrats or the Republicans. If you just fall in with this Bible and what's prescribed in this Bible, you can fix your problems. That is my number one message. That is not a popularity. That's not a popular message. That's not going to win. And now as Candace now pivots into leading with her faith more, there will be consequences for that. But she built a massive following in the political lane. I'm not comfortable hopping in that political lane in that way. Go just as a small example, just like decisions that I've made that I know the consequences of. I liked appearing on Tucker Carlson's Fox News show. 
when Tucker Carlson got fired by Fox News, I said, I'll never be on Fox News again. Because Fox News is just establishment Republican politics. I don't want anything to do with it. And so I've never been on Fox News again. I don't turn on Fox News on my TV. I don't, I occasionally I turn on CNN just to see what the crazies are saying. But from Fox News to Newsmax, Newsmax versus, you know, David Harris just started a show on Newsmax. I like David Harris. He asked me to come on his show. I wanted to be supportive, so I went on his show. But all of the Newsmax, Fox, when they call an ass and Fox quit asking because now they get it, I'm, you know, not going back on. But Newsmax, I don't go on there either. It's not, I don't dislike any of those guys. But I'm just not that into politics. I want to talk about God, sports, movies, popular culture, and I want to be I want to keep a healthy distance from politics because I think it corrupts. I think there's political idolatry. I've made choices that will limit my popularity because I think popularity, when you start chasing popularity, it moves you away from God. And I don't want to be moved away from God. I'm afraid. The, the, what, what Patrick McDavid said, I don't ever want to lose the favor of God. I actually believe that and take actions, I think, that are consistent with that. That's just me. Finally, uh, I want to play this is a very short clip of one of Patrick Beck David's minions. And I don't, I don't want to say that dis, uh, dismissively. One of his sidekicks uh, makes a pretty telling comment about me and how much they actually know about me. Let's play SOT 6. Whitlock, I think he just talks politics now, right? I don't think he does. He's on The Blaze, which is a conservative media outlet. His show is called Fearless. Talks about everything. You know, the, the media landscape has changed since you joined ESPN. That was probably the most troubling thing for me, is that I've been doing this for three years, and, and this guy thinks that I come on here every day and talk politics. And, and they're just incredibly uninformed, breathtakingly uninformed. It, it, it's like, look at the stuff that puts me in the news cycle, criticizing Deion Sanders, uh, pointing out the lies in Stephen A. Smith's book, uh, P. Diddy. It, 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 it's, it's Caitlin Clark. The, the big brands, the big topics that I talk about. How, how could the guys, oh, what, he's, he talks politics. That's, uh, that's all he does. What did it, I haven't, Tucker Carlson, I used to go on Tucker Carlson's Fox News show, let's say once every 10 days. He's been off Fox, I think, for now more than a year. I haven't been on Fox News. I've done an interview with David Harris last week. But find me on any of these political shows. And if you do find me interviewing someplace, I go on Megyn Kelly's show, I go on Bill O'Reilly's, but they bring me on to talk about the stuff that I'm an expert on. Sports, culture, Diddy, Dion, what is this guy talking about? Th these guys are completely uninformed. And that's why I think Patrick Bed David is a plant. He's there to spread misinformation, no different than Stephen A. Smith. And just like Stephen A. Smith, instead of being man enough to address anything in a direct, in honest fashion, they go to distraction. They go, hey, look over here. Hey, uh, Marcellus Wiley is upset with me. Hey, Jason Whitlock, he's the bad guy. 
People are upset with me about Lake and Riley. Hey, Jason Whitlock's the bad guy. I'm, I'm beefing with Jason Whitlock. He's worse than me. Am I really? I, I don't think so. Uh, Patrick, uh, again, all you man up. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> it, it's, it's real. You know how many mistakes I've made and will make this week? How many times I've had to cop to like, man, I was wrong. I was unfair here. Just, just, just man up. What she did a year ago was complete BS. You know it. Anybody that watches it, and again, to have this discussion with Sage Steele and never mention to her, never have a come up. Well, you know, Jason came down here and he was very upset because uh, we misled him about what was going to transpire. Uh, we uh, were doing our jobs as agents of chaos and trying to put Jason and Roland in a Negro wrestling contest for, our, for the benefit of our audience. Jason didn't like it. He didn't kiss my ring. He hasn't been nice to me. You're, he's not likable, Sage. You're likable. You and Candace are likable. Jason's not likable. <laughs> are you? Did you put me in any position to want to be nice to you or likable to you? Or did you have me waste my time flying down there to Negro wrestle? Some Negro, I have no interest in wrestling again. Roland Martin's a clown, and it was insulting for me. And again, I'm insulted by very little. That you would take time out of my day and away from my show and the people that I work with to come wrestle Roland Martin, a clown. That says something about what you thought about me. Oh, Woodlock's a clown. Okay, well, I'm gonna take my clown ass back to Nashville and I'm good. You, on the other hand, are still trying to settle a score. Good luck with it. Uh, that's our show uh, for today. We'll play tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Waiting for the countdown, coming off the breakdown, standing in line for freedom. Looking for a breakout, feeling like a standoff, nothing in line, like Freedom came like a fighter, striking like a ladder, making all this moves for freedom. I want freedom. No negotiation, my system, no relation. We all just wanna have freedom.